The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is the Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode 9. Uh, the title-ish, the topic of this episode is uh, the freedom of speech is a two-sided sword um, because it seems like during the entire time of Trump uh, and during the entire time of COVID and the entire time of the uh 2020 elections and the uh, entire entire time uh, of Ukraine and now of uh, Israel, it has always seemed in the past until Israel that um, the discrimination and the censoring and the limitation of free speech and the description and definition of free speech being only uh, approved speech and not anything that's considered to be hate speech or anti-narrative speech or anti-establishment speech or uh, anti-trans speech or anti-gay speech or anti-Semitic uh, speech or uh, anti-vaccine speech or anti... Um, I don't know, the list is so long, it's really hard to explain. Uh, but as we know, right, with regards to uh, transness, mentioning someone's dead name or mislabeling their pronouns intentionally or any of these things that are just poor form, they're not socially viable. They're uh Hey, dead. Oh, sorry. I knocked your head off. I apologize. <laughs> I'm impressed that I actually have the, have the loft. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, it was a good catch, though. <laughs> um, I mean, all these things are rude, right? All these things are uncouth, right? It's like meeting someone and saying, I like your bosom or any type of rude thing. However, uh, to legislate against it or to create laws against it or to put people in jail for lying or for being in defiance of what the official story is which is happening a lot these days with regards to people who uh, openly defy the whole uh, world of misinformation and disinformation. And if you say something like uh, trans women are not women or trans men are not men, or if you say something terrible like, um, uh, I don't know, um, January 6th was just a, just a protest, and it was not a violent protest, or if you say something like um, the 2020 election was stolen and uh, Joe Biden is a, um, is a puppet governor, a puppet president, and the true president should have been Donald J. Trump, and the election was not free and democratic. It was stolen through uh, corruption. Or if you say things like... Uh, Ukraine baited Russia into entering the war, or if you say anything like, uh, you can end up in jail now. Now, that's worked up till now because it has kept, um, it has kept down people who are easily perceived as white supremacists or right-wing extremists or um, Nazis or fascists or right-wingers or anti-vaxxers or um, deplorables or Trump Trumpers or MAGA Republicans and all that kind of stuff. But what have I been saying to you guys? What you do is you set precedent on the easy wins, right? It's not hard to send someone to jail if they are 
killing children because of their their language about how COVID vaccines give people cardio, whatever. Um, or it's easy to send someone to jail when you uh, when you can be considered of uh, messaging against a war that American interests and American lives are being you know put in danger for. Or things like it's it's really simple, right? Like if you um, if you go against a narrative and that narrative is defined as misinformation or disinformation, and if America is in the precipice of warfare and that warfare is a warfare against COVID-19 or a warfare against extremism or a warfare against Russia. Um, it's pretty easy to say things like your words by saying publicly that the COVID vaccine hurts people or that uh, January 6th was a nothing burger or that Joe Biden would have lost the presidential election uh, were it not for extreme levels of corruption and uh, and and vote stealing and election stealing uh, of a sophistication never seen in the entire world before, but practiced on places like Venezuela at all. You can't say that without going to jail now. But here's the thing, right? It was really easy. Uh, they do it in Germany, like to make it illegal they don't have uh, freedom of speech in Germany, by the way, but it's really easy to create legal precedent on throwing people into jail for supporting right-wing extremism, domestic extremism, uh, nationalist populace, and people who are perceived as crimes against humanity, hate speech, anti-trans, anti-woman, anti-Semitic uh, and all these things, it's really easy because it's a no-brainer, right? You want to, you everybody wants to make it illegal for uh, for these for anybody like uh, the next American Adolf Hitler. Nobody wants his ascension or her ascension. Nobody wants. Everybody will do what they can to make sure that one suppresses the next the next uh, what is it authoritarian tyrant, right? So. All these laws are being put into effect in order to protect us from uh, from Nazis, from literal Nazis, from fascists, from right wing extremism, from hate. All these laws are protecting us from hate, and all the precedents have happened. The Supreme Court hasn't uh, released anybody who's been to jail because of January six, and and nobody has overruled any of these attacks on Donald Trump to try to get him into prison or uh, nobody's tried to overrule all of the legal attacks on people like Alex Jones, who's the epitome of someone who's going to jail for misinformation, disinformation, etc. Whether it's legal or civil court, there is a precedent that extremism is rewarded with, uh, with, uh, with, 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 with either extreme amounts of money uh, needing to be paid in restitution to the point of billions of dollars or literally going to jail for an unpredictable number of years. Now, I don't want to say, ha ha. I don't want to say, I told you so. I don't want to go, ha <laughs> ha. I mean, all these things are very untoward, but exactly what I said was going to happen is happening, which is um, the same precedents that have been used, like the Rico's, the Rico, uh, laws in uh, Georgia, in Atlanta, as well as uh, anti-hate, anti-misinformation, anti-disinformation, anti-extreme uh, free speech. Uh, all of these things are now weaponized and they are being used against all extremism. So they're being used against uh, anti-Palestinian, pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel, pro-Israel, uh, mostly they're being weaponized against uh, anti-Israeli, pro-Palestine, pro-Gaza, pro-Hamas uh, activism, which is also perceived as another extreme. But that extreme is well outside the definitions of what is acceptable, right? Um, it's not acceptable to weaponize anti-free speech weapons and laws 
and, uh, you know, legal courses of action with regards to uh, AUSAs and with regards to uh, judges and with regards to Department of Justice and with regards to the FBI and with regards to state and local police. It's poor form. You don't do that against Antifa. Yet we'll see that the RICO uh, laws that were weaponized against Donald Trump were then weaponized against uh, Police City or whatever that whole thing is. And it was weaponized against, was it 200 or 20, I don't know, Antifa members. Um, While even my smartest friends say that Antifa isn't a group, it's only an ideology of loosely associated people and a nefarious uh, but innocuous emergent group of, of, uh, of, of uh, defiant anti-fascists. Um, the grouping of them in persistent anti-police um, city conspiracy against the opening of the police city training place in Georgia results in an emergent kind of RICO uh, conspiracy akin to um, common dia organized crime, right? So, so uh, Trump is uh, Trump's uh, posse, posse comitatus is considered to be uh, a conspiracy of organized criminals. And so they receive the RICO and now the Antifa is. Now you'll be seeing this right now, the moment uh, October 7th, happened and uh, Hamas invaded and slaughtered Israelis and unbeknownst to Israel, I'm sure they never assume this is going to happen because America's been um, overwhelmingly in support. I think 10 minutes after uh, Israel existed in 1948, I believe that our president went on the record to say that we have nothing but unending support of the state of Israel and its right to exist. But holy mackerel, they never expected this uh, this to happen. I mean, this isn't supposed to result in this way. And now you have huge amounts of, uh, of protests, uh, freedom of speech, but in the form of anti-Israel, death to Israel, pro-Palestine, pro-Hamas, pro, uh, pro-Arab, pro-Israel, I mean, sorry, anti-Israel, very literally... Um, free speech protects it, but they say things like from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free or all these other things that are extremely controversial and all the anti-free speech legislations that are jury rigged to attack and undermine the, the main high profile members of the Trumpist nationalist populist state. All of those weapons that have been honed and have been made into precedents and made into law that are used to suppress the hate speech against trans, against LGBTQIA, against people of color, against African-Americans, against Pacific Islanders, against um, Muslims, against uh, any and all minorities, against Pacific Islanders, against Asians, South Asians, East Asians. All of these uh, anti-racist, anti-misinformation, anti-disinformation law is going to be used as a weapon against anything deemed to be violent or dangerous through words. So we'll see. Will it be targeted against people uh, supporting Israel? Will it be targeted against people supporting uh, freedom and justice for Palestine? Is it going to be uh, used against uh, people who are creating AIs or AI images or fake news or even people just supporting news that has been uh, propagandized? Is it going to um, already people are being arrested and thrown into jail for the free speech that uh, happened? Um, I think I don't know how many people, but. Was it 200 people? I'm fixated on 200. But I think 200 people were arrested for the peaceful protest um, in support of Palestine that happened in the Capitol building. Um, That's free speech. Uh, I always say that the canary in the coal mine is, sorry, the canary in the coal mine 
I like that canary in the coal mine. But uh, the canary in the coal mine is if America is safe as long as literal Nazis in literal uh, dress up in their Hugo Boss uh, designed jackboots and their crazy, funny, um, sexy bear hats in their kinky ass jackboots and their uh, silly little armbands. As long as those people have the freedom and the protection and the liberty to jack, jack, uh, jack, jack, jack march, jack step, goose step up and down Main Street and without creating violence, without hurting anybody, without any kind of secondary incidents where it's only about marching, uh, aggregating collective, you know, uh, um, what is the term for it? I forget the term for uh, collecting with other people that's protected too. And, you know, spewing their hatred as long as the, uh, as long as that's legal and as long as that's tolerated in America, which it hasn't been for 30 or 40 years, then America's okay. It, if it can tolerate that kind of crazy and that kind of inappropriateness, then our, our constitution is sound. Um, what did Al Gore, was it Al Gore who said, or someone said he was a card carrying member of the, ah, what is it called? I used to be a member of ASMP, but that's not the same thing. But it used to be that uh, this rights protection organization that is peopled with very smart pro-constitution, pro-freedoms lawyers um, would go out of their way to defend anybody who's having their rights trampled upon. But even that group, I had to stop supporting them because they play favorites. And either they're in on something or... They've completely been bamboozled because the same laws that damn people like Alex Jones and Donald J. Trump and and uh, other people who probably don't have the goodness and kindness and sweetness of the world as their number one best interest. These these if if you can if you can weaponize uh, their language against them and their freedom of speech against them, and if you can make it verboten to ever share anything that's considered anti-narrative or whatever, quote-unquote, anti-science or anti-trans uh, or anti-non-binary or anti-gay or anti-minority or anything. If you always have asterisks next to human rights, and that human rights means uh, human rights are fine, and we like the fact that there's human rights in the Constitution, but... Uh, we actually think that this, these protected people and protected class of people and pr these protected species of people uh, need to be especially protected uh, to the point that anything said against them in words, not in deeds, but in words, are considered to be violence, legally speaking, and can result in, uh, in, in legal ramifications, in, in going to jail. And that's nothing to say that if you do not agree with uh, science, or if you do not agree with medicine, or if you don't want to raise your children the way it is fashionable now, or if you don't agree with, uh, if you're outspoken about the fact that you think that a vaccine has given your children autism, or uh, a vaccine has given you uh, AFib or arrhythmia or a heart attack or sudden death to your uh, your high school age child out of nowhere who's never had any kind of um, heart condition at all. If you want to stand up and create an organization or a nonprofit or something that contradicts the um, the official word of doctors, science, World Health Organization. Uh, or just general powers to be, you're likely to be, uh, I mean, at, at the very least, you'll probably be uh, censored or you'll be canceled. Or, for example, to show you as a quick example of how uh, everything has been weaponized against the opponent, and the opponent is Trump, let's say, let's try, the gold standard is the opponent is Trump and Alex Jones. Now, uh, and this isn't even like official. This isn't even legalistic. There's no Department of Justice on here. But uh, if you are now, because it's been normalized 
and it's not weird anymore. Everybody's got a tolerance for this. Everybody has gotten used to doxing. Everybody has gotten used to canceling. Now, now that the norms and standards and values have been reset towards a uh, baseline witch hunting, it's uh, okay to say like everybody who signed an affidavit, 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 affidavit against uh, the retaliation of Israel against Hamas and into uh, the Gaza Strip. Everybody who signed it saying that we do not support Israel uh, retaliation against the Palestinians and we demand a ceasefire. And we believe that Israel is a fascist organization and we believe that there is apartheid in Israel against the Palestinians and that uh, they are not the victims, they are the victimizers. People who write that into their affidavits or their or their uh, public, like, what is it called, public letter, are being summarily, people from Harvard and Yale and Oxford and 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 uh, Princeton and obviously Stanford and, and uh, Berkeley, these people in their final year of law school and their final year of business school are having all of their invitations completely revoked and they're being blackballed by the same companies who are really excited to get them as employees. So, and they're having their names outed. They're having their everything doxxed. They're basically being served up as, uh, as sacrificial lambs. And they're, uh, they are literally martyrs. However, it doesn't feel that way when you think that you're going to be making half a million dollars the following year after you graduate. And now, uh, all of those opportunities have been revoked and you've been completely black. Um, and that's normalized now, you know? If you speak out of turn, like apparently this freaking podcast will be, if you speak out of turn, the ramifications of your behavior, your actions, will be uh, not proportional, but uh, exponential to the harm perceived. Uh, instead of a, an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, It'll be an eye for a city block, uh, the way Russia and Israel have always responded to violence. They live in existential footing. Their behaviors aren't like, their behaviors do not know the manly arts of fisticuffs. They don't understand the whole concept of, you know, living to fight another day. So as a result, any kind of, uh, any kind of, uh, bad touch will result with, uh, with, uh, deadly response in the way that people don't understand in the concealed carry world of America. Um, if someone puts their hands on you, you don't have to just fight with your hands. If someone takes out a knife, you don't have to all of a sudden become an expert in knife fighting. If someone, you know, pulls your hair or cold cocks you in the face or knocks you over, you have every re legal uh, if you feel like your life is in danger and that if you do not take lethal, if you don't use lethal response immediately to end the altercation, that in your heart of hearts you believe that that person wants to kill you or wants to maim you or wants to give you brain damage or break your bones or hurt your internal organs or, or uh, fuck you up, you have every right to unholster your firearm and shoot into their their central mass, center mass, until they stop attacking you. That's perfectly legal in American parlance. And that's perfectly legal not for a police officer or not for a soldier. That's perfectly legal for anybody who has, uh, who, who's in their home or anybody who has constitutional carry rights or anybody who has uh, a uh, permit to conceal carry. If you feel in your heart of hearts that you are that your right to life is threatened, you can treat that experience not just as a teachable moment, you can treat that moment as an existential crisis, and you can defend yourself way out of proportion of the situation. Even if you're afraid that someone's going to mess you up bad enough that you might miss work the next day, or you don't want someone to kick you in the groin, or you don't want someone to break your arm, or even even like scuff your leg, like very literally, 
in most cases, if someone puts their hands on you, and if they uh, put you in a position where you are being backed up and you feel like you are in mortal threat, even if that mortal threat wouldn't organically happen, uh, and for me, if anybody kind of steps up to me and puts their hands on me, I'd feel the same way. Um, the rule is never to hesitate. The rule is to go ahead and end that engagement as soon as possible to the point where the where the, it is no longer happening, where you've ended the melee, and then not to fire or shoot or attack back or respond anymore. The moment the threat ends, you need to stop, call 911, and, uh, and end the engagement. But, like, someone could argue, well, they only wanted to mug you. They only wanted to give you a black eye and a bloody nose and take your wallet. They weren't going to kill you. Well, we'll never know that, right? Like, like, you can die from being punched in the nose. You can die from any kind of street fighting. Every street fighter knows that fighting in the street is a really dangerous X factor because you don't know how trained the person is. You don't know how desperate they are. You don't know how strong they are. You don't know how quick they are. You don't know if they're armed or not. For example, in concealed carry, it's against the law, a felony, to brandish your gun. So if you're trained in firearms, you need to uh, only pull your firearm. You need to draw your firearm at the exact moment you're willing to use it, right? So not in preparation, not to hold someone off. You need to have one sweeping motion between drawing and shooting. And you probably need to start shooting first in the legs, then in the groin, then in the belly, then in the chest, and then stop there because people consider headshots to be extremely violent. So then you stop. Once the person backs off, turns tail, runs away, you don't continue shooting at them as they as they flee. Um, it's, you know, a very aggressive way of saying, get the fuck off me. So I guess the analogy here is that in my buddy tells me that in Italy, for example, if someone home invades you or comes into your house unbidden, you have to restrain yourself to proportional response. So I guess you need to know uh, boxing, Kung Fu, Aikido, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You need to know uh, Krav Maga, knife fighting, sword fighting, uh, stick fighting. And then as you escalate, I guess you could at some point, if the home invader happens to have a Benelli shotgun, then you can shoot them with the shotgun, but not with an AR-15. You need to wait until they have an AR-15 before you can respond in kind. So you need to make sure that you are resplendent with various and sundry proportional weaponry in your home, just in case someone comes in with a baseball bat. I guess a cricket bat would work, or maybe a pipe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a baton. But if they have a baseball bat, then you better not shoot them in the in the chest. That's not sporting. That's not proportional. In America and in Israel and in Russia, I know that for a fact because uh, hijackers in the 60s, 70s, and 80s were super scared, were super scared at all times to ever hijack a, uh, a Russian airplane because generally speaking, they would just blow up the airplane or they would just go in and shoot everybody in the in the in the uh, same thing with uh, people, car, uh, people hijacking uh, El Al. Is that right? El Al, uh, Israel commercial aircraft, you know, blow up the entire aircraft rather than dealing with terrorists. It's uh, non-negotiable. Out of proportion, right? It's totally out of proportion. Um, and, uh, and historically speaking, back in the day, as I remember from the 80s and 90s, um, even the 2000s, Whenever there would be someone who used a suicide vest to blow themselves up in a uh, in a local fresh mar market or farmer's market or on a bus or anything like that, what they would do is they'd find out who the um, who the suicide bomber was, and then they would they would warn the block of apartments uh, that they were going to be taking a, is in a, an Apache or a Cobra, and they were going to use. 40, 50 caliber, whatever, uh, miniguns to take down the entire block of apartments, like the entire block. And that would supposedly the next time encourage 
people who live with someone they know is uh, is radical, it would encourage them to be like, hey, Mo, uh, chill out, man. I like my house and I like my I like my store and I like my restaurant and I like my this, like my that. Of course, that's bad. You know, you just need to watch Batman once to realize that uh, it just makes people hate the uh, Israeli government even more. It should scare them off of future attacks, but really what it does is it makes them angrier. It doesn't dissuade. Um, so on that note, we'll see what happens. We'll see who are the people who get canceled if both sides get canceled. Um, it seems like every uh, self-described Antifa, every self-described uh, lefty and progressive uh, activist, every uh, BLM activist, every uh, anti-fascist activist, every activist who is pro-LGBTQIA, pro-trans, everybody who goes to the streets over these kinds of human rights and these kinds of definitions of uh, anti-violence and anti-fascism. Every single one of those folks are either publicly or proudly or recklessly or passive aggressively being extremely pro-Palestine. So to the point where uh, leftist pro progressive uh, Brooklyn Jewish kids are tearing down, you know, kidnapped missing photos of people on walls and like it's really crazy. And I think that the establishment, whatever that means, is going to exact the same kind of DOJ, FBI, legal judge based attack on that behavior with as much a plum and dedication and improportional violence of uh, of of using using the the baton of justice um, that they have done that they've sharpened their knife on with regards to extreme rightism and what is called fascism and what is called white supremacy and what is called MAGA extremist and all that other kind of thing. So like I said in the very first sentence, the uh, the sword is two sided. The sword is two two sides and has a double blade and all of the cutting that has been done against the far right is now going to be leveled against the far left. It'll be extremely interesting to see what extent and what unintended consequences and what intended consequences, what kind of blowback is going to happen, and whether or not this is all uh, distraction theater. This could all be an up. This could all be distraction theater. Might go away in a couple of weeks. Who knows? Or who knows? I don't believe it until uh, something or someone blows up within 500 meters of me. Otherwise, I just think it's wagging the dog. I think it's all theater theatrics and uh, Hill and Knowlton and uh, possibly Edelman. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night. Bye -bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.